church is supposed to be the depository of the truth here yes. on earth. You know, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes his disciples in the beginning of his earthly ministry, you know, and he's, he's chosen these people um, and he's training them in righteousness. Mm-hmm. You know, again, I go back Sermon to on the Mount. I'll, I'll go, yes, in the Sermon on the Mount. I go back to what Paul said in, uh, in his second letter to Timothy. He said, all scripture is God breathed and profitable. And he says it's for training in righteousness. Mm-hmm. Well, Jesus was giving his disciples as he is giving us now his word to train us in righteousness. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And he said in that Sermon on the Mount, you are the salt of the earth. Mm-hmm. You are the light of the world. By the way, that, that study in the Sermon on the Mount is also here and on the Bible Talk website mm-hmm. and worthy of your attention, all right? The point is that the church is supposed to be that salt, the preservative. The, the church is supposed to bring the light of God into the world, right? Absolutely. This, this assembly, this group of people in Laodicea who say they are rich and have need of nothing, they, you know what they need? They need the truth. Mm-hmm. And the truth is standing outside at the door, knocking, all right? We know that Jesus is knocking, but the clear indication here is that he's also saying something, mm-hmm. all right? He says he's knocking at the door, but he says, if you hear my voice. Yes. So what was Jesus saying? I'm going to read you what he's saying, because it was in the beginning of this letter. He said, mm-hmm. in verse 18 and 19, mm-hmm. he said to these people inside, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Mm. Okay, that's what he's saying. He says, I advise you. The King James says, uh, uh, I counsel you. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, I've talked about, gosh, I, I go around here. I don't like the word mentor, right. in, at least in the context the church is. within the church, yeah. the, how the church uses it today. It's it a had, worldly connotation. Well, it has replaced the word disciple, disciple. right? right? Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, you know, somebody is being discipled, now you say they're being mentored. Well, the difference is. Big difference. Optional. Well, it is optional. Mentor, by the way, who is a, actually a, a a person in Greek mythology, all right? He was an advisor, Mm -hmm. okay? If you have an advisor, they can tell you based on, you know, their opinions, their expertise, whatever, Mm -hmm. what they think you should do, and then it's up to you to make make that decision. A disciple has a master. Yes. When Jesus says something to us, it's a commandment. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? His word, all of his word, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, is command to us. And the difference between those two is the authority. Well, it is. And the reason is because we, as believers, have accepted him as the Lord of our lives. We made that choice somewhere in our lives and accepted. We opened that that door door to him Mm -hmm. and invited him into our lives, all right? So God is a God of free will. Now, I, I don't want to get into the deal between uh, Arminianism and Calvinism, but I, I, I know for a fact, by the way, I can make a good argument for either one of those, <laughs> without doubt, all right? That would be another Bible study. <laughs> yeah. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Yes. God is a God of free will. Mm-hmm. All through Scripture, to those who don't have that right relationship with Him, He says, this is your choice. Joshua, out in the wilderness, with people that are supposed to be His, but are not living or acting that way, mm-hmm. Joshua says, listen, if God is God, serve Him. But as for me and my household, we will serve, serve the Lord. Elijah goes up with, again, a rebellious people of God on Mount Carmel and says, you know, how long will you be divided between the two opinions? If God is God, serve him. And Baal, if you want to choose Baal, go do it. But make up your mind. It's the same way here at Laodicea. He says, because you're neither hot nor cold. 
They haven't made a decision right. between this and that. They want to stay in the middle. And Jesus yeah. says, that's lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Okay? Right. Hmm. So that's there a is a point, choice, yeah. you know, for these people in Laodicea. That's true. While there is yet time. You see, you know, it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's an appointed time for everything. All right? Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 3.15, it says, while it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me. Speaking of those rebellious people in the wilderness. Right. There's a time limit. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, if, if you're listening to this and you know that you're not in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, God is inviting you. He's knocking at your door. He is speaking in his gentle, sweet voice to you. But know that there's a time limit. Today, if you hear his voice. Come to me, all you with me. Call on my name I will give you Rest for your soul Let me touch you Make you whole I've seen your suffering Heard what you pray children and some is pain.